Many years ago, I digitalized a load of cassettes and I've, I've been happy with it and it was quite good. Um, when I say cassettes, I mean actually, I mean videotapes and audio cassettes. And I'll tell you what I discovered. You won't want to miss this. This one's going to be a bit of a ramble. The reason being that the subject is manifold, many complicated ways of looking at it, and um, I'm giving you an opinion that makes any sort of sense. I'll tell you what I mean. Right. I had um, probably about 40 cassettes that I wanted to copy. And I used that as audio cassettes. And I used Audacity, and I bought myself an Ion deck, and I copied them across. And I did a little bit of dabbling with the Audacity just to get the speed right and a couple of other things and saved them to saved them to disk. Saved them to hard disk. Worked very well. Took ages. A couple of lessons learned. First of all, if you digitalize a cassette like, for instance, oh, I don't know. Let's have a look. If you're going to digitalize a cassette like that one, don't bother. Unless it's a really special one that's got something that's happened to it. Like it's got a special tangle that means something to you because it was given to you by your lover. If it's just a normal music cassette and it's got normal music tracks on it, don't bother digitalising it. Go to a streaming service and get it off there. Don't bother digitalising that because you're not going to get as good off your tape player. Now... What I did have, though, was some stuff that you can't get off streaming services. I had some Kenny Everett shows, and I had um, a couple of other programs that were special at the time, and also a couple of compilations that I actually made up myself. I used to sit there at 6 o'clock on a Sunday, and I used to push the record button, and I used to record programs, like uh, the tunes from the Top 20 with Alan Freeman. Unfortunately, I used to cut Alan Freeman out, as most of us did, but... You know, those tunes and that version of those tunes, i.e. the mangled beginnings and ends, do have a slight meaning to me and the order in which they were played. So I digitalise those. But what you've got to remember with digitalization is simple. It takes time. My God, does it take time. If you've got 40 cassettes at half an hour aside, most people have 45 minutes aside, but we'll, we'll just take the numbers, keep it simple. Half an hour aside, 40 cassettes, that's 80 sides. Or put it another way, that's 40 hours of taking it across. If you're then going to digitalise it properly and, and try and get the best from it, you are going to you want to cut out the bits that are wrong. That's another 80 hours because it's going to take that long to do it. And then you're going to want to transfer it to the, um, the storage media you're going to use. Well, that's fine, that's not very very time consuming unless you want to use cds or dvds in which case you're going to have to burn them and that's going to take another five hours at least five hours on most equipment and what you've got at the end of it is you've got a copy of what you had a digital copy of what you had except you haven't because you've doctored it you've cut bits out and whatever so actually what i found and this is my own opinion what i found the best thing to do was play the tape as it was from beginning to end, stick the two sides together, as in side A and side B, with the gap, and call that one file. I was on a Facebook group the other day, and they were suggesting altering the azimuth for every tape that you copy. I would suggest that's not a good idea, because if you've bought yourself something new to do this thing with, if your tapes are that far off that you need to adjust the azimuth, then maybe you've got a different problem to sort out. Leave the capture device as it is, and maybe get a cheap thing to, to, to find out whether the azimuth is wrong. But to go twiddling it on your new device would be a bad idea. And how long have you got to do this job? You've got to ask these questions, because at the end of the day, it's going to take a long time. And if you fiddle with every one, it means you've got to put it back for every one. If you work it at standard, it will just work. The thing to remember is that with a digital file, you can boost the treble or whatever is necessary. There is even software nowadays to get rid of wow and flutter. So don't worry too much about getting it absolutely right off the tape when you don't know that the tape's correct in the first place. What you can see now is a super USB K2 
cassette capture. It's a very cheap Walkwood type thing. It will do the job. And if you've only got some home produced stuff from a shoebox recorder in the old days that you just want to make sure you capture you know, the, the visit from Auntie Flo and that sort of thing, or the kids doing nursery rhymes, one of these is probably more than adequate to do the job. And the good thing about it is you don't need anything else to go with it because it plugs straight into the computer. Another misconception people have is that the machine has to be the best possible playback. That is sort of true, but most machines play back better than they record. So, yeah, get one that plays back as well as you can. But don't worry too much about it. it's not a very good recorder because you're not going to use it for that. This deck, which is the same type that I got, costs around about £85 when I bought mine. They're now available for about £100, and if not this one, then this one. This deck is almost identical. It's the Marantz version. And there are other makes like Pile and a couple of others. They're all much the same. If you check out my video on new cassette decks, you'll find that the, these don't actually perform that badly for the money. If you want a deck that's got a good reputation and is worth having and is you know you can actually use it now, it's very good this one. It's the TIAC W1200. It's got a re good reputation at the moment. And it's proved to be quite reliable by most of the people who've had it. The good thing about this one is it also has an output straight to your computer. You can see from this it's just neat, but you will need to have the correct lead. It's the same type that they used to use for printers. If you already have, or if you prefer, a vintage cassette deck, one similar to this maybe, then you can have your cake and eat it. You can get yourself an adapter, something like this one. This is a Behringer USB thing. It's about 20 quid and it gives you digital output, headphones and various other things. It's quite comprehensive and it's very useful. This is a useful bit of kit. This is a Sabrinth USB plug-in device. You've got line in and line out and it's about between five and nine pounds. This one's a stereo one. That's very useful. But what it hasn't got is all the monitoring facilities that the Behringer's got. I was saying about doing a video, this is about £39, but this is a lot more. This is the best way of doing it. You just set it up, record straight to the hard drive, and then get that to convert it to a DVD or CD or whatever. You've got to check that they take in video signals from the outside, but if they do, they're brilliant. The earlier ones do. And finally, we're talking about digitalizing vinyl. The thing about that is you're not actually going to be using it to archive it as such because you're going to be wanting to move the files around and play them in your car or on your phone. Whereas the cassette files, you're actually wanting to put so that they're safe. With the vinyl files, I would suggest that you want to get yourself the best record player that you could get for the money that you've got available to play what you want nicely. And the good thing about it is you set it up to your system and you can just use it in real life anyway. I would go for the Jewel if it was me. I've got something similar. This other one, well, if it fits your budget, that's fine. And if that's what you need, that's fine. Do be careful with cheap turntables because they can be a bit junky. The two I've shown on here, you can just plug straight into your computer again. However, if you've got one already or if you buy one without the USB output, then you could use, again, the Barringer or the Sabrinth. They'll both do the job and they'll do it nicely for you. Nice and simple. Don't try separating the tracks. Don't try indexing them. You've got 40 hours of stuff to go through. It's going to take you, and I've no idea how long it's going to take you, but we're looking at four or five times the amount of time. This was something I learned from doing the videotapes. Now, I did not bother copying... Tales of the Unexpected from 1985 or anything silly like that. What I do with the videos, simple. They were all home movies, but I had hours and hours and hours of them. And I started off like most people. Oh, let's clean them up. Let's do this, that and the other. No, 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 no. If you've got a three hour tape and it's got three hours of the kid doing stuff, you don't want to start mucking about. So what you do is you just copy it straight. So you then have a digital copy of the tape that you started with. And if you do it that way, it's simple. If you don't do it that way, you've got a problem. You've got a problem of time, and it's the sort of job that you'll never ever get done. If there is something really special, you can then do a bit of digital processing to it, 
just to make it better, but choose what you're going to do. If you've got 40 hours of stuff, you're going to take five times longer to process it if you do all the special processing. So don't. Just process the bits you want. Treat that as the ongoing project, not the copying of it, but the enhancement of it. Treat that as an ongoing project. Do it on a as-you-need-to basis. If you've got the files safely stored, you can go back to it any time. Anyway, that's an opinion. If it means anything to you, then great. Put it in the comments. Like, share, all the rest of it. Subscribe. Why not? Catch you later. Bye-bye.